I hate to interrupt the good conversations, but I want to check in with everyone before our time is up. Um, one of the things I want to point out is what you have been reading are short excerpts from the sermons of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Sermon one. Sermon two, an excerpt is in the commentary in the book that you have. If you look at verse two in the commentary section. Sermon number two, there's a section there. Uh, you had sermon three, part A, and you had sermon three, part B. Uh, St. Bernard wraps up this idea in sermon four. He wrote four full sermons expounding the depth of this one half verse. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. That is expressed in all four of these sermons. And so what I would like to do at this point is hear back from you. What did you mine out from these? And these aren't the full sermons. These are just a couple of paragraphs that I thought were kind of like the highlights mm -hmm. of the sermons, so that you get a taste. And just so you know, yes, there's another book. Uh, this is a great summary of the, the Song of Songs. It's Christian Classics, Talks on the Song of Songs by Bernard of Clairvaux, edited and modernized by Bernard Bangley. And it's a, it's a small book, uh, and it is, this is $15 put out by Paraclete Press. I'm not sure if it's still in print, but this is an excellent, this is where I got things from. Okay, this is just the beginning. Now we're not going to do this with every single verse. <laughs> oh, thank the Lord we'd be here until the second <laughs> cover. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of it is to show what level of spiritual depth there is in this love poem. We can't underestimate the level of the richness of the Word of God. And what better to teach us than this powerful saint? So that's what I wanted to give you a taste of. So, a great book of St. Bernard's sermons. So, time. Group one. Sermon one. Question. How does St. Bernard compare the Song of Songs? What did, how does he compare it? Like the passionate wedding song of the soul. Very good. And the mouth that kisses is the word. Oh no. I, I I know. Know. <laughs> the mouth that kisses is the word. And that takes on a human nature. And the nature assumed uh, and the nature received the kiss and the kiss itself constituted one giving and the other one receiving is a person the one mediator between God and man who is Jesus Christ. Very good. Yes. 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 He might have but he quotes other scriptures throughout all of these sermons as you've seen all over the place and although saint bernard died while beginning his sermons on chapter three he really quotes from the entire song throughout all of his sermons as well as other parts of the bible so i don't want to say he neglected it but as far as a systematic going through an ex exposition of it that's where he ended. But he pulled the ideas from the whole song. So, group one. Uh, you're a group one here, right? Tony, Chris, Alvaro. How can one interpret the song? How does St. Bernard go about interpreting the song? Um, yeah, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Microphone.
That said. Very good. Yes. The way St. Bernard interpreted the song, this kiss was God, God uniting with man. That is a powerful statement. And uh, you two are the only one. So either group can answer this. Do you feel prepared for this song? No. 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 <laughs> Why not? Why not? Elaborate. <laughs> oh, dear. I did have to speak up. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I... Microphone. Go for it. Do it. Do it. I, I still have a hard time explaining or uh, understanding why this man who slept with all these women <laughs> is writing about Jesus coming down and, and uniting with the church and everything mm -hmm. else. So, I have a hard time. Okay. <laughs> all right. That, that, so be it. Although you know that that was never his intent, how he did it. That came to be how I'm it was sorry, it was never... He didn't think of that when he was writing this. <laughs> oh, you mean Bernard? Or, or no, no Solomon. Solomon. That's who you're talking no, about. No, he just had, a, had to sleep around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to move along. Now, I am going to take up a little bit of Sermon 2. So, uh, we went from Sermon 1 to Sermon 3. I was going to take a little bit of Sermon 2, so I'm going to share this with you. This is what Bernard says about the kiss. As I've already said, this is not a physical kiss. Pay careful attention. The kissing mouth is the word, w, capital W-O-R-D, in human flesh. The shared kiss is the one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. This is why the request is not, let him kiss me with his mouth. There is an important difference when we say, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. This acknowledges Christ's privilege. On him alone, the mouth of the word has been pressed. For in Christ, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And here he's quoting Colossians 2.9. The kiss we speak of is therefore the product of divine humility. Far from a mere touching of lips, it is the spiritual union with God. The human and the divine are mingled. Two become one. Did you hear that? Yes. This is the kiss desired by the Holy Ones. From long ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Do, you, do you hear what he's saying in this sermon? This is this is rich. This is rich. Now, let's go on to 3A. So Evelyn's table. Do you think you've had the experience that is described in paragraph one? Microphone. Yes, no, yes. maybe, kind of, only on certain holidays. <laughs> no, it's for everyone. Okay. 